this really alarmed me um, about one of our players last night. So there was a discussion, um, kind of a baseless question. You know, what happens if Darius Slay does not come home up, uh, come home? What happens if Darius Slay decides he sits out the year? Who would you move to the number two cornerback position? I think uh, 313 JMO had brought up that he would move Quandre Diggs there. And then Luke G chimed in with a take that was so weird and just it was just so far out of left field. Gentlemen, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. What up, though, Phil G's, and welcome back to Luke G's Phil Review. As you can see, I got challenged again. Yep. Um, after having a debate with uh, Derek and then another one with TA, um, I get challenged by There Goes Mommy. And not, not necessarily a challenge per se, but he had a problem with something that I said on the Detroit Sports Alliance, AKA DSA, round table segment that we do um so cool now let me be clear with y'all people this is not a beef if you listen to uh mobby talk about it in his video he clarifies this is not a beef he has an issue with misinformation i have an issue with misinformation as well but i also have an issue with assumptions um and he, he even clarifies that no disrespect to you guys and i want people to recognize that because i know a lot of times is there's these these certain type of narratives but nonetheless he basically don't agree with something that i say now the thing that he really don't agree with is quandre Diggs and tavon Wilson. and you may be saying to yourself well what is it that he don't agree with he don't agree with my belief that uh when i said i do not want to see quandre Diggs at the slot corner now if you watch the DSA roundtable, you will hear the whole conversation in its entirety. Uh, it was on Noble Sports Entertainment. Shout out to him. Make sure you check that out. And all the DSA members' uh, links are in my description. Now, Mobby, let me just tell you, man. I have said it to you before. Anytime you want to have a debate, let me know. I'm always ready. Um, and I even went to his uh, video and put that in his comment section. Uh, but after I read all your comments, I was, I was like, oh, really? Oh, huh, huh, so funny. It's funny how we can agree to something when there's nobody to immediately rebuttal uh, something that somebody else say. So we're going to make it in a way where I have to kind of do the video to rebut it. The first thing I want to do is let y'all see where he gets his thing. And then he has a little segment that he takes from the DSA. I don't want to use that because y'all can go and watch the video for yourselves. But he tries to make fun and say, you know, little funny things. And I think it's cool because I think that's good editing. And, you know, I don't think it has the same effect as it would for some other videos. But I get what his point was. We're just going to see how serious he is. Let's listen in to what he's saying. What's going on Detroit Lions fans? It's your boy there goes Mobby back again with a, another video. I know it's been a while. I was just searching through YouTube and I came across this video. Uh, you guys might have seen the DSA's round table last night. And um, I have a I have a thing with mis misinformation, bro. Um, a lot of guys like to think that this is some type of beef. These don't be beef, man. I just have Again, you heard it himself. This is not a beef. You hear it from me. This is not a beef. We're not going to turn this into no beef because this ain't nothing to be beefed over. We both have a passion for the same team. And he has his views and I have mine. And this is what we call friendly debate. This is what I always want to encourage. It's called friendly debate. Whether you we agree to disagree or agree to agree or just disagree, it's, a, it's about having respect for each other. So just want to put that out there. I have a big issue with misinformation amongst this uh, community, and this really alarmed me uh, about one of our players last night. So there was a discussion, um, kind of a baseless question, you know, what happens if Darius Slay does not come home up, uh, come home? What happens if Darius Slay decides he sits out the year, who would you move to the number two cornerback position? 
I think uh, 313 JMO had brought up that he would move Quandre Diggs there. Now, right there, right there, I'm going to go back because I think y'all didn't catch that. But let's go back just a little bit. See, I'm not going to slow it down. I'm just going to ask y'all to listen really well. Listen. 313 JMO had brought up that he would move Quandre Diggs. Let me go back a little bit more. Sits out the year. Who would you move to the number two cornerback position? What was the question again, Bobby? If Slade decides he sits out the year, who would you move to the number two cornerback position? Who would you move to the number two cornerback position? Okay, that's the question. Let's listen in. I think uh, 313 JMO had brought up that he would move Quandre Diggs there. And then... Actually, what J-Mo said was he, I, th I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think J-Mo said that he would move, uh, he would have Rashawn Melvin move over to the one, Coleman move up to the two, and uh, Diggs to the three. But, okay. And Luke G chimed in with... Love the close-up. A take that was so weird and just, it was just so far out of left field. Now, he says my take is weird and so far out of left field. But at the end of this video, you're going to see that it sounds like he might agree with me on so many fronts because he's going to say a whole lot of stuff. And then the way he ends it is the most telling part of it all. And then Jamo and the rest of the guys kind of piled up on it. And it was just like nobody was there with any sense. And, and guys, you really got to do some homework sometimes. You guys really got to Google. Google is your friend sometimes, guys. And I just wanted to point this out, man. No hard feelings to you guys. But no hard feelings to you, neither. The statistics say you're wrong. Oh, you know? we going to so see I'll, about I'll that. I'll play the clip for you guys right here. So, again, according to him, the statistics is going to say we're wrong. So, let's get to his argument because in between this video, it's just basically him, you know, having his little fun, basically saying, hey, I don't agree with what you're saying. So here's where his argument starts, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so he says he, he doesn't want <laughs> Quandre Diggs to play the nickel. He said, that's what he said. Uh, Luke, Luke, my friend, you can't say that you watched the Lions games and oh, I've watched so many games and all I see is Tavon Wilson get burnt. But then turn around and say, you don't want to see Quandre Diggs in the slot. Now, here's my question to y'all people. Those two things don't even make sense to me personally. Now, here's my thing. One of them is you got to understand. I said, I don't want Quandre Diggs in the slot. That's what I said. And I said, I saw Tavon Wilson getting worked and getting burnt. I said all those things. What is wrong with my state my statement there? It's not like I'm saying Tavon Wilson was playing the slot corner. I say he's playing safety. I said I don't want this guy being my starting safety. And if Mobby was being truthful and all those people who was in the comic section like, yeah, Luke just be talking and he don't know this and yeah, he gotta watch what he say. All them people. Okay. Answer this one question. Do you want Tavon Wilson to be your starting safety on the Detroit Lions this year? Because what I think you will find out is not only do you not want that to be the case, something that I don't want, the Lions don't want it. And you may say, well, Luke, how do you say that? Because they went out and signed Adams. Okay. They went out and made Tavon Wilson take a pay cut. Okay. They turned around and traded up to draft a safety in Will Harris. So if you're going to tell me that I'm saying something crazy, we're going to test this theory out. But let's let him go ahead because now he's going to go and he's going to use one of my favorite things. And most people who use this, I love it because a lot of the times there's a lot of stuff that's not uh, included in these formulas that they come up with. And I think it's beautiful. He's going to use pro football focus statistics and information to attempt to dethrone my belief that we should not at no circumstance have Tavon Wilson as a safety starting. Not to mention, 
I could have got more in, in detail into it during the, the podcast, but I, you know, I'm driving in the rain with, with, with my, my kid in the car. So I'm, I'm penting to the road a little bit more. Nonetheless, here we go. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you just told on yourself. I don't know what you're watching, but you're just talking. And I got a, I got a problem with misinformation in this way, because here are the facts of the matter here. And, and when it regards to Tavon Wilson is the rest of the secondary, well, especially Quandre Diggs as part of the, the slot cornerback position. Detroit led the NFL in safety usage in the slot. And again, those people who saw his video heard what he put out there. No one ever heard me say that uh, that information wasn't wasn't true. Nobody never heard me say, "Oh, we don't need to put the safety in this box." He's going to also say where they, you know, they had a lot of three uh, safety sets. I, I've talked about that, that in a number of videos where I've said, "Hey." You know, we're going to use a lot of three safety sets. I've said this stuff. This is nothing new to me. Why? This is where the assumptions come in at. Now, the thing that I love about people who assume, they make my job easier. Because if you're going to use this pro football focus stuff, let's use it. But the problem is, is there's always a way to look at numbers. Like, like you know, there's there's there could be two, right? And then there could be two inches. And then there could be two feet. And then there could be uh, two miles. And th there's a difference between each two. We know that there's two of them, but there's a difference between each. And when I go through and I look at stats, I dig into them based on what I also saw with my own eyes. What I also saw with my own eyes, okay? Now, let's just go ahead and listen more. By a wide margin, okay? I don't know how, you guys say you watch the games, but you don't know this. The Detroit Lions are Never said I didn't know that, but okay. He, he, he. The number one team in the NFL in using safeties in the slot. Which, which is interesting too, because if you go back to the last year, who's the starting corners? Darius Slay, Nav Lawson, and we gonna pray, okay? They had four there, they tried everything, okay? They really did, they tried everything. But the fact is, the team was better with certain people there. But I'm going to get more into my, my perspective. Hold on. Matt Patricia, his scheme revolves around three safety sets. So for you to say you don't want to see Quandre in the slot, it's like, what have you been watching if that's not what you want to see? Where else does Quandre play? He says, oh, I don't want to leave the back end of my secondary open. It's like, what are you talking about? So here's what I'm talking about, Mobby. Uh, if you got Quandre Diggs in the slot and you're coming into it with Tracy Walker, who's playing the other safety spot? Oh, wait. So you're just telling me they're just going to come out and they're just going to just come out with the three safety sets. Oh, okay. Okay. So they're coming out with the three safety sets. We know Quandre Diggs is one of the safeties in the slot. Tavon, uh, Tavon Wilson is going to be the other uh, safety based on how you want it. And then on top of that, we got Tracy Walker. Now, let me ask you this question, Mobby. What has Tavon Wilson done to be considered anything special, let alone a starting safety on this team? On any team for that matter, okay? Any team for that matter. What has he done that will lead you to believe he should be a starter on this team? Even if I wouldn't care, even if Darius Slade don't play, I want to keep this the, the top of the defense secure, okay? Perfect example would be if you got Troy Palomalu or you got Ed Reed or some other legitimate safety like Charles Woodson and whatever, I don't care, whoever you can come up with. You are not about to sit there and just let the top of your defense be taken off because now there are so many other things that's gotta work. See, this is where people start to make this assumption. Why would I ever want Tavon Wilson starting on this team? And not only that, even J-Mo said in that same segment, he doesn't even want him on the team. But let's find out what Mobby's going to say in terms of Tavon Wilson. Awesome. But let's just listen. I'll continue. Like I was saying, Detroit led the NFL in safety uses in the slot by a large margin. 28.2% of the time, the Detroit Lions had a safety in the slot or they had three safeties on the field. Quandre Diggs, the person, I just said, Quandre Diggs spent 
460 snaps playing slot cornerback last year. I'll say that again. Quandre Diggs played 460 snaps at the cornerback position. That is 99 more times than the person in number two. Why? That is 99, 99 more times than the person in number two. None of this stuff he's talking about is stuff that I'm, that I'm addressing. That's not my issue. My issue is Tavon Wilson. Anybody who heard that segment know that my issue is Tavon Wilson. In my segment, I also said that Quandre Diggs as a slot corner was okay. He was better as a safety. This is not me making it up. It's, it's not. How do you think he got a contract extension? Because he performed as a safety better. Period. And then I also said I can even I would rather even see Tease Tabar get a shot at safety. Why? Because Tease Tabar reminds me so much of Glover Quinn and Quandre Diggs. Guys who really should not be playing the slot cornerback because they don't have the elite speed, but they're great in space. They, they got good ball skills. They know how to close on things. Yes, I want to see him at safety. I think he's a better safety. He can tackle. And I think he has good awareness. The problem is, in the slot position, most of those slot guys are speedy, quick, shifty dudes. I'm not asking T. Tabar to try to track uh, T.Y. Hilton in the slot. For what? Try to keep up with Julian Elderman? For what? That's not where he's going to be best at. But nonetheless, I think he, I think he'll be better suited there. Just like I think it was a better, uh, better suit for Frank Ragnar to be the center. Period. Is, is, is that me is that me saying that Frank Ragnar can't play guard? No. He, he's okay at guard. He'll be better at center. This is not hard, but okay. Wide margin. So I, I'm just wondering, Luke, what games have you been watching? All of them. Our slot cornerback has always been Quandre Diggs. Nah. I mean, <laughs> Agnew was hurt. Tabor couldn't play. Mike Ford was playing number two. Never lost. What games were y'all watching? And then everybody's just piling on these jokes about Tabor. Okay, so we get there. Because Tabor was. I was gonna say that. That is 99 more times than the person in number two. So 460 minus 99, that's number two wherever he was at. But moving on from that, Quandre spent 60% of his snaps, his total snaps. 60% of his total snaps, he was on slot. He was and here's the thing I love about this this little bit that he gives right here. Let's just be honest about this. You just named all those people who was hurt. One of the things that any defensive coordinator or head coach should do, they're smart, is adjust their defense accordingly, right? Like, like if you lose, say, let's say we still have Barry Sanders and we was giving him the ball 30 times a game. But when Barry Sanders get hurt, the next running back up is Kevin Smith. You're not giving Kevin Smith the ball 30 times. You need to make adjustments that's going to give your team the best chance to win. Now, with that being said, what does that mean for his logic behind all this? It means that he is still under the assumption mode. Even though he may have been slated in that position, he was still, literally, still in a position to act and play as a safety. He can put it however he want to. I saw it with my own two eyes. I don't need pro football focus to tell me this. But let's let him finish talking. He was in the slot cornerback position. So what are you saying you don't want to see? He's been doing it. He said Quandre Diggs was an okay slot cornerback. Fact. Again, misinformation. Thank you. 302 General pointed it out. He was number one. He was the number one. I don't know about that. Now, I want y'all to take a moment because he's the guy who said he's not into the misinformation and he was quick to go. He was number one. Then he quickly stopped himself and thought about it like, up, oh, I can't be trying to clown him and then saying misinformation. I don't know about that. He was in the top five. Come on, man. We're not, we, we, you're nitpicking at something that you want to agree with at the end of this video. And that's the only thing that's going to boil down to my whole argument, which is I don't want Tavon Wilson as a starting safety on this team at all. Period. I would rather see somebody else. I've seen enough from Tavon Wilson. He was top five. That's that's what I know for sure. 
In 2017, Quandre Diggs was a top five nickel cornerback. He only moved to safety because Tavon Wilson got injured. And then in his first time playing safety ever, he got three straight interceptions in three games. This is on a defense that had Keep in mind, I never I never discussed in my conversation that, oh, well, why he was moved to say when he got to safety, he was just better. I'm sorry. I don't care why a person got moved to the spot that they got. I can easily go through and tell you all the reasons and stuff behind it. That's fine. But when he got there, he was better. Monumental trouble causing turnovers. They cause zero turnovers. They, I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, well, no, actually they lived off the turnovers that year. Excuse me. I almost gave off some misinformation. This is on the defense that lived off of the turnovers. So they put him there that year. He got those three interceptions, like three turnovers, three shake games. Boom, we found a new spot for you. Now here's my question to y'all people. You know, he's got the three interceptions, the three turnovers, boom, we found a new spot for you. Why do you need to find a new spot for a top five slot corner? I mean, he's top five, right? Why would you need to find a new spot for him? Is it because that the logic tells you he was better at that spot? I mean, like, for example, right? Like, if you go through and Lamar Jackson, for some reason, just not cutting it as a quarterback, but he's a stellar wide receiver, would it be clear or fair to say that maybe Lamar Jackson was better as a receiver than a quarterback? I guess in some people's word that this is not a possibility to be truth, but okay, let's, we're going to listen more. But wait, there's more. Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer.